Hey guys, it's Pastor John. Do you see the QR code here on the screen? Well, I need you to do me a favor. We're going to be honoring a father on Father's Day here at the church. And guess what? You get to decide which father we are going to be honoring. So go to that QR code and tell us why your dad is the best dad. Also, we're giving away three prizes, one for every service. So you don't want to miss it. It's going to be a fun and exciting day. Can't wait to see you guys. God bless. Hey, Compassion, it's Pastor John. I want to tell you about a ministry we got here at Compassion. It's called Compassion Cares. It's our church getting outside of our four walls, going into our community and sharing the love of Christ. If, you, if that touches your heart and you would like to be a part of that, we invite you to come the second Saturday of each month and be a part of Compassion Cares here at Compassion Church. I promise you, it'll change your life and you also will be changing someone's life because you went outside the church and shared the love of Christ. God bless.
expect a disappointment Love was all I just get this deep feeling 
in my heart that there are some people in here who can relate to that first line that says, you met me at my lowest moment. That there are some of you in here who are saying, I am at my end. I don't know how much more I can handle. I feel like I'm about to break. And if God doesn't step in and take over, I don't know what's gonna happen next. So I wanna encourage and I wanna speak to you specifically this morning that God sees you right where you are. That it is not a mistake that you are here this morning hearing the lyrics to these songs that are more than just lyrics. They are an anthem from a savior who loves you. It's a love story from a father who says, yes, I've seen what you've done. And maybe you're sitting in the guilt of some of your own mess, something that you've done yourself and you're afraid to go to the Father because you're expecting Him to be disappointed and for you to feel the shame from the Father that you've given to yourself. But I want to tell you today that He is a Father who loves you, who says, I've seen what you've done, but my grace is deeper. I'm not a shallow God. I'm a God that desires to go deep into your heart, to permeate, to go past the pain, and to get down to the source. So today, in just a second, I'm going to pray for you specifically who feel like you're at your lowest moment. And the prayer team's going to come down during that time. And afterwards, I want to challenge you to come and partner with our prayer team and say, that is me today, and I need prayer. I believe that His grace is deeper and that He wants to do a deep work in my life, but I need you to stand with me. Or maybe if it's something that you've overcome and you're asking the Lord to come and just to solidify that, whatever it is, we ask you to come down and pray and let the Lord move in a deep way. Amen. God, I thank you for who you are. And I thank you that you are not a shallow father. You are someone who comes in and you want to go into the deep places and you want to bring grace. You want to remove the pain and you want to begin just a life of purpose and a relationship. So God, I just pray that you just begin to nudge the hearts of those that need prayer. We ask you to come in, have your way, do your thing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
answered, I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, and that's why I trust him, that's why I trust him, I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, that's why I trust him, that's why I trust him, I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, that's why I trust him, that's why I trust him, I I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. And that's why I trust him. That's why I trust him, God. My Savior, the one.
into it and we know that you are not finished yet so God we open up the doors for you to move in God to come in and continue to do a deep work in our hearts God the, the soil is fertile we're ready for what you want to do so God come in have your way do what you want to do in Jesus name amen amen like I said earlier I honestly believe that it is not a mistake that you are here today so we are we're gonna do exactly like I just prayed and we're gonna ask the Lord to just come in and do what he wants to do because he is not finished yet amen we're so glad you guys are here you may be seated hey guys it's Pastor John do you see the QR code here on the screen well I need you to do me a favor we're gonna be honoring a father on Father's Day here at the church and guess what you get to decide 
which father we are going to be honoring. So go to that QR code and tell us why your dad is the best dad. Also, we're giving away three prizes, one for every service, so you don't want to miss it. It's going to be a fun and exciting day. Can't wait to see you guys. God bless. right? Yeah. Good morning, Compassion. Good morning. Oh, come on, come on. Good morning, Compassion. Good morning. Okay, that's better, that's better. Listen, um, I've got a few announcements for you. Um, first thing I want to talk about real quick is these hats, these cool Compassion hats. So if you got a dad, Father's Day is coming up, husbands, boyfriends, friends, whatever, we are raising some money for our children's ministry. There's a few things that they need, okay? So you will find my gorgeous wife out in the hall. Okay, thank you, thank you. I'm a lucky guy. Um, so you will find her out in the hall. Um, sign up and get you a few hats or get you one of each like me, okay? All right, back on track. So we're super happy to see all you guys, but we're really, really happy to see a special group of people. And that's our first time guest. So you guys help me welcome our first time guest. You guys are really, really special to us. And listen, in the seat back in front of you, there's an orange card like this. If you'll fill that out, or you can scan the QR card on the seat back as well. Um, and we just want to get a little information from you. What, what we want you to do is to go to the VIP tent. Um, if it's storming, it may be inside, okay? But we've got a gift for you, a special gift just for you. We want to give you a fist bump, a high five, a handshake, a hug, whatever you're comfortable with. But more than anything, we just want to look at you and hopefully say, welcome home, okay? So help me welcome our guests one more time. And listen, as we transition into a time of uh, his tithes and our offerings, um, we're going to pass the buckets as normal. You can text to give. You can give online. You can even roll it up and attach it to a carrier pigeon. We'll get it, okay? But there's several ways to give, all right, and, and be a part of uh, God's blessing to our community, okay? Now listen, last week I, I, mean, I was reflecting on, on, and you guys got a treat from uh, Mr. Young Pastor Love here this morning, so be prepared for that. But I'm reflecting on last week's message Pastor Bob had, and, and Pastor Bob had talked about, he kind of changed it in a few services, but he had talked about um, the woman that had, that had gone to church, gone to synagogue every week and was bent over and stooped over forever until Jesus took those burdens off. And he was, and he kind of got in me a little bit there. And, you know, when we come to church, we come to church to leave changed. Okay, and so, so we want to stand up straight and walk out. We want to go back to the same sins we were doing. So remember that. And I want to leave you with one thought before I pray. Jesus said from his mouth that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So trust him, give it to him, and he will lead you where he wants you to go. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you now. We just thank you, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to come into your house to praise you, to worship you, to, to, so that you fill the temple, which is us, dear Heavenly Father. We just ask right now that this message that uh, Pastor Love brings to Heavenly Father is your word. It opens the hearts and minds of everyone in this room, and we leave changed. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Good morning, Compassion Church. How are we doing this morning? How y'all doing? Y'all good? Hey, man, praise the Lord. Feel free to talk back to me. I love that stuff, man. Uh, when the body uh, of, of Christ is alive, the body, uh, we should be moving uh, together. Amen. The Holy Spirit brings the church to life. So as, uh, here's the thing, I, I'm going to preach this message, hopefully, uh, but the Holy Spirit, I feel, has me to share something. The Holy Spirit brings the church to life. Amen. 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 Thank y'all for saying amen. So with that being said, whenever we come to church, we are not going to come here for consumer Christianity. May consumer Christianity die in the name of Jesus. I am not here for a show. I am not just here for three or four great songs in a sermon. I'm here to be changed. And in the body of Christ, even if you're sitting in a pew in a chair, every Sunday we're going to come and we're going to interact here. We're going to interact with the one true living God. He is deserving of praise. He's deserving of worship. He is not wanting us to stand by and be a spectator. Spectators, that's a, that's a lukewarm spirit. And I'm not here with no lukewarm spirit. I'm here to bring the fire of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So be challenged. Be challenged today. I feel the Holy, I feel the Holy Spirit in this place. I feel the Holy Spirit in this place. Amen. I'm so grateful. Uh, aren't y'all grateful that this is a church where you guys allow the Holy Spirit to do what pleases him? Amen. I didn't start the first service like this, but I did feel led to come up here and exhort that we're not just here to, uh, to, to just for as bypassers or whatever. We're here to activate. We're, we're here to activate the body of Christ, uh, to animate the body of Christ, to come to life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you're singing your songs, lifting up spiritual songs and praise and worship, we, we don't even know uh, if there's unbelievers in this place. The Lord Jesus Christ sits on a throne and receives the praises of his people. He inhabits the praises of his people. So whenever we lift up a praise, when we lift up a song, when we lift up prayer, we should be considering that someone unsaved may be in the audience whose life is getting ready to change by the power of the Holy Spirit. I've not just come for the sweet ecstasy of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, come make me feel good. Change my life in the name of Jesus. Change my life. Don't come just to make me feel good. Change my life. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to get into it. My name is Kenny Love. I am from Oklahoma. Amen. Amen. Okay, I would receive uh, more. I would receive that more lovingly if Dallas didn't knock off OKC in the playoffs. But you know, hey, I'm still rooting for y'all to win the whole thing. But here we go. So I stole y'all's pastor from y'all, Pastor John Leggett and Pastor Lori Leggett. They're my pastors. Uh, so thank you. Um, love Pastor John, Pastor Lori. Thank y'all very much. Uh, thank you, Pastor David. Uh, thank you, uh, Pastor Randy. Mr. Jeremy, I appreciate you guys uh, uh, for, for, for helping and serving uh, and just advancing the kingdom of God, okay? So I have a little thing. I'm going to get in the word. Who loves the word? Okay. I'll try to make it quick, but trust me, man, I, I, I can get on rambling, as y'all saw a second ago. So before we enter in the word, let's pray. Holy Spirit, I pray that by your power, you would manifest now. Uh, I pray that, I, or well, I say thank you that your spirit is in this place. I say thank you that you're here, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would receive praise in this message. I pray that you teach the body of Christ. Uh, even though you have blessed me and privileged me uh, and honored me to be the giver of the word, your word is a double-edged sword, I pray that you prick me too. I pray that you teach me too. I teach all of us in the name of the Lord Jesus. And may your word be received by the spirit of wisdom, wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him rather than just head knowledge, Lord Jesus. Come and teach us, Lord. In your name we pray. Thank you, Jesus, and amen. amen. So uh, I made this joke last service. Everybody, you know, uh, probably has this experience uh, and whatnot, but so whenever your pastor who uh, came from a church that's about, you know, 130, 150 miles away asks you to speak a sermon series about uh, one of the five books in the Bible with one chapter in it, make sure you ask him this question. Am I going to be the first person? Because, boy, I did not want to get stuck with Obadiah or something like that. I'm very glad, very content with 2 John. So, so here it is in 2 John. If you wouldn't mind uh, uh, opening up the word with me and engaging with me, we're going to read 2 John chapter 1. Obviously, there's only one book, so chapter 1. So here it is. This is from the Apostle John, uh, the disciple of Jesus Christ. The elder to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth... 
and not only I, but also all who know the truth. Because of the truth that abides in us, and we will and will be with us forever. Grace and mercy and peace will be with us from God the Father, excuse me, and from Jesus Christ the Father's Son in truth and love. I rejoiced greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as we were commanded by the Father. And now I ask you dearly, dear lady, not as though I were writing you a new commandment, but the one we have had from the beginning that we love one another, and this love that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning, so that you should walk in it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Such a one is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourselves so that you might not lose your uh, what we have worked for, but may win a full reward. Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting. For whomever greets him takes part in his wicked, wicked deeds. I'm going to start, stop right there at 11. So just a little bit, little bit of a, a breakdown of a contextualization of what's happening in 2 John. So uh, the apostle John, this, the same apostle that, was, uh, that is a disciple that walked with the Lord Jesus Christ, who's known as the one whom, uh, uh, whom Jesus loves, right? So he is writing uh, this letter, this epistle to uh, what I believe, many scholars to believe, a literal elect lady. This is a, a lady who was a, a church member. She probably, uh, she was very hospitable. She probably operated in the supernatural gift of hospitality and of generosity, right? So a lot of the members of the early church um, met in homes. So we have this beautiful uh, church building, Compassion Church, Wichita Falls, a lot of the early church. Amen, we can clap for that. Beautiful building. So a lot of the early church members, uh, whenever we received the Holy Spirit, uh, met in homes. So the elect lady was probably a minister uh, of, of pastors who were coming and going, ministers who were coming and going, right? Providing them a, a, a platform of ministry for the gospel of Jesus Christ, providing them probably with food and drink, and then other resources, uh, and then shipping them out. Then, you know, the same old, same old cycle. So with this being said, the apostle John, he is throughout the first uh, five, six verses, he's commending the elect lady that you have walked in the truth. Elect lady, you have obeyed the commandments. And this is the, obey, the, the commandments that have always been from the beginning. And, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But then we get here to verse seven. For many deceivers have gone out into the world. Those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh, such a one is the deceiver and the antichrist. So if I'm giving this message a title, I'm going to title it this, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. So with the whole antichrist thing that he's talking about, so the apostle John literally writes, or excuse me, writes of a literal antichrist figure in the book of Revelation that's going to reign during the tribulation period, right? But both John and the apostle Paul write throughout their epistles that there is an antichrist Christ type of nature that's actively operating. There is an antichrist spirit, right, that's leading many people to believe a false gospel or an antichrist gospel. So these men who, and women who preached false uh, narratives of the person of Jesus Christ and just the story of God, these people were often labeled at, by the church members as antichrist. Okay? So Here's a little bit of an overview. I want to talk to you today about why people are actively falling away from the faith. Uh, how we as believers handle deception and the act of falling away of believers. Finally, to be able to, with precision and accuracy, be able to defend the faith against deception. Amen? Okay. 
I'm going to move quick. So a statistic, uh, here, there was this little study conducted in the year 2022 that Christianity, the U.S. population, has decreased from 90%, which was in the year 1972, all the way down to 64% in the year 2020. So that is a substantial, a steep drop. That breaks my heart. It is not pleasing to see people fall away from the faith. People who claim that they know Christ, that they believe and love the Lord Jesus with all their hearts, and then just simply walk away because of doubting our, our, our hearts. Uh, that's displeasurable. In this same study, out of all of the uh, unbelievers that they, uh, all the unbelieving correspondents, uh, they took 1,050 people from this study that were ex-believers. So people that have walked away. And they asked them, what were the top three reasons in this poll that you left the faith? Here's in order. Reason number one, reasons and matters relating to the LGBTQ plus community. Here's number two, the second reason people leave the faith. Second most common reason is the behavior of believers. Here's number three the lack, what people believe to be the lack of intellectual integrity of the Bible. Amen. So what I'm really hearing here is that whenever we do produce the word, this word must be uh, unadulterated. This word must be unpoisoned so that we can minister to these people who are falling away. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, the Apostle Paul writes to his spiritual son, he says, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. I know that the world is being the world. The world, we know according to Scripture, the Word of God, is perverse. Right? This, word is, this world is perverse. And that's okay. You know, wherever I see a, a, a lack of ministry, I see a possible move of God. Amen. 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 But here's the thing. I never thought, I don't know if I can say I never thought because I'm 21 years old, but I never thought in my 21 years of living that I believed in God uh, that I would see so many believers now take up the practice of the world in believing that what is wrong is right and what is right is wrong. It's ridiculous. Amen. It's ridiculous. Amen. I remember, and you know what? I'm going to get on my own head. Because I remember being, uh, it was like 2016, 2017. My mother, I, I praise the Lord, my mother is on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, and this was not, not too long ago. But in 2017, me and my mother were believers. But, I wasn't, but we weren't like, we didn't love the Lord. We didn't really know the word like that. And I was talking to my mom. And I, and I looked on the TV that she was watching, and I saw this, this homosexual man who had lustful affections for another man, right? And I looked at the TV, and, and, and God, I just, I, I just prayed. I remember praying for forgiveness from this when I really turned my life around because I, I looked at the TV, and I said to my mom, I said, Mom, do you ever think that, you ever think that God got it wrong? Lord, I repent, forever considering that your word is wrong. So here's the truth. Here's the truth right here. I love this. So as we're ministering to the world, I'm going to address uh, the apostle John telling her to deny uh, ministers. So the apostle John is known as the apostle of love. He's the one whom Jesus loved. You can see it all throughout his writings. Love is a driving force of the Lord Jesus Christ. But this same apostle says this about supposed believers, not the unsaved, supposed believers, not worldly people, supposed believers. In verse 10, he says, if anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting. For whoever greets him takes part in his wicked work. So here it is. Here's the truth for you. Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago, who is God, who was not created, 
He has forever been, and he was a part of the creation plan because he is God. The prized possession of heaven came down in the flesh very humbly through the Virgin Mary, born in a manger. He sacrificed his life for the sins of the world so that we no longer have to slay goats, slay lambs, right? But we have forever forgiveness and atonement. But not only that, we now have the grace to live a holy lifestyle because as he died, he said, I give up the ghost. I surrender the ghost, which is the Holy Spirit, who is also God, who now has, who lives in us and gives us the ability to live a lifestyle that pleases God. Amen. And that's the, that's the gospel right there. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit are all God. They are all uniquely themselves, but they are all God. If anyone preaches this gospel, what you're doing, if you take them in, if you sow financially into this gospel, what you're doing is you're a worker of wickedness alongside their ministry. Steer clear. Do not be deceived. Many people today are preaching this false gospel. Steer clear. Do not be deceived. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. And this is what I learned. With my perverse thought of mind in the year 2017, is that my knowledge of scripture is directly correspondent to my level of morality. My knowledge of the word is correspondent to my love for God. The less you know, the less you love. The less you know, the worse of a condition you will be in. It is strictly important uh, uh, to know the word. And even so much so, he says, for training in righteousness. The word righteousness literally means right standing with God. You know the word, you know right standing. Here's my, here's my first point. I'm going to keep trying to move. First point, we as the body of Christ are to defend the faith. Amen. So I have a, I have a barber. Uh, his name is, is Larry. I call him Unc. I'm just like, what's up, Unc? And I've been going to him since I can even remember. Him and my pops. My pops is in the back. Can you wave your hand? That's Kenneth Love Jr. I love you, Dad. Thank you. Um, him, him, and, him and Larry were the, the best of friends. They were, they were basically family. And, and, and one thing I've learned through conversations with my father is that this man was never a believer. Right. So I remember uh, getting my hair cut thin and, and he still cut my hair, which is like lit. So I always thought him to be generally a believer. Right. And we, we be talking about boxing. I like I, I like watching boxing, but he is like a guru with this stuff. Like he like he knows what he's talking about. So we, we talk about a little bit of that. And then uh, he just asked me this random question out of the blue. I mean, y'all know in like black barbershops, people just, they just be chopping it up about anything. It's just about anything. They be talking about anything. And we, we finished a basketball conversation and he's like, Unc is like, Kenny, do you think that there's aliens? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, what in the world? What does that have to do with anything? But then, then, then I'm like, I mean, I don't know, Unc. I mean, like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's my best answer for real. And he's like, yeah. And his response to that was, yeah, I, I would think it personally uh, to be a, a waste for God to create all of the universe and to just not create any or other sort of life. And, and my, my, my life kind of like, my, my head kind of like creaked a little bit because I was like, well, I mean, who are we to say God is wasting anything? I'm not in the place to say God is wasting anything. We're, we're jumping around. I can tell that he's a, he's a little bit studied up, but it's in a biased way. And he's talking about the, the, the Roman Empire, this. He talks about Jesus not existing. He talks about the name of Jesus being made up. And I'm like, Arr! I'm like, Jesus Unk, is the living son of God. So there were some things I had to address here with him. Uh, no, the Roman Empire in the first century was not a loving band of people. Rather, they were murderous towards people who claimed anyone is Lord rather than the emperor at the current time. Christians being filleted, Christians being burned alive, turned into candle wax. This is all, all these believers were maimed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He talks about the Lord Jesus not existing because he said, well, I can trace back my great, 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 whoever in his, in his bones. Do you know that 99.99% of people in the first century had no, uh, 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 had no archaeological tracing? 
If you wanted to be the 0.01%, you were probably an emperor. You probably a king of some sort. Jesus of the socio-economical status of a peasant would have no physical way, if he was dead, let me say that, to even trace anything that he had. Likewise, the name of Jesus Christ is not a made-up name. Amen. It's not a made-up name. Amen. This is an English translation. This is what you will face as a believer. These are things that literally steer people clear of the faith. But here's an answer. That is one of the silliest things I've ever heard in my life. The, the name Jesus Christ is of Hebrew origin, the name Yehoshua, which literally means Jehovah saves. That name has at least existed from 6th century BCE before the Common Era. Yehoshua literally means Jehovah saves. When people saw the Savior, they said, that's Jehovah saving in the flesh. That's Jehovah saves in the flesh. And we obviously have to translate it to the English language, which we translate to Jesus. Alexander's not a fake name because we have Alejandro, right? Just as much as Jaime is not a fake name because we have James. It makes absolutely no sense. But here's the thing. If I would have not known any better, I'd be convinced. If I didn't know about it, I'd be convinced of this falsehood. This is why it's important to know the word and its surrounding information. Three things to remember as you're ministering to those who are deceived. Pray for them. Amen. James 5, 16. Therefore, confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it's working. Here's point number two that coincides with that. Let the Holy Spirit do the work. 1 Corinthians 2, chapter, chapter 2, verse 4. And my speech and my preaching, Paul says, was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and of power. Whenever I tell the Holy Spirit, now nah, let me try to manipulate this and make this work for the faith. What I'm telling Holy Spirit is, Holy Spirit, I don't need you. Holy Spirit, I don't need you because I can convince him. I can save him. Look, let me tell you, man, I am absolutely no savior us as individuals, we are no savior, but we worship the true savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's point number three. When ministering to unbelievers, they are not your enemy. Amen. I had to repent because I, I, I giggled like ominously like an evil villain from a TV show when I was like, boy, do I got the information in another two weeks to, to slap him with whenever I get back to the thing. But look, this is not a, a, a battle of flesh and blood. I'm not trying to win an argument. I desire his soul. Because, you know, if we want to line up our hearts with the Lord Jesus Christ, you know what Jesus Christ desires? That no man perishes, but the word says that all men be saved. I want to let you know right now that nobody wants people saved more than the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> nobody wants other people save more than the Lord Jesus Christ. And here's the thing is you're going to find people who will try to use your word, use the Bible as a way to attack. They're going to try. They're not looking for answers. They're looking for a way to shoot you down. They're looking for a way to challenge your faith. But here's the thing. Ten times out of ten, whenever people are doing that and attacking the word of God to try, try to find contradictions, which they can't, it's a heart issue. Point number two, going into that. Our role as the body of Christ is to live out the word. The way that we act reflects our faith. I heard this quote. It's not from me. I don't know who it's by, but it's not from me. And it said, you will, there, there, there are many people where you will be the only Bible some people will ever read. You will be the only Bible some people will ever get to read. So in 2 John chapter 1 in the fifth verse, when he's talking about the loving commandment, he's referring to Jesus' commandment, uh, what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 22, excuse me, when, he, when they're asking him, what's the greatest commandment? He says, the first is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. The second is like this. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Living out the word means that we must continue to love each other. I can preach a great word, see 10,000 salvations, but if I am the most disrespectful person in the room, I will neglect the work of God and some. 
1 Corinthians chapter 13, if I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith as to remove a mountain, but have not love, I'm nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver my body to be burned and look like the most generous person, but I don't love you, I gain nothing. Here's the thing. Information without love acquires no progress. You make no progress, further progress for the kingdom of God, no further advancements when you don't love. Love is the driving force for the supernatural to activate in your life and in the life of an unbeliever. Love is key to a changed life. Paul writes in Romans chapter 2, verse 4, Don't you see how wonderfully kind, how tolerant, and how patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that his kindness is intended to turn you from your sin? It's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. And we can manifest this goodness through us when we're kind to those who don't believe us, when we're kind to the person that hates us for no reason, when we're kind to the person who cut us off, when we're kind to the person who disrespected us for no reason. You are called to a higher standard. Stop looking, stop acting, stop thinking that your reaction can be the same as the world. You cannot share the reaction of the world. You cannot be treated, you cannot use the justif justifying standards of the world because we live by a higher standard. First Peter, right, the, the apostle Peter writes in First Peter uh, chapter 5, verse 16, but as he who has called you is holy, him being God, so be holy in all manner of conduct. How you hold yourself should be set apart because God is set, set apart. I'm going to make this point. Stop, uh, here's another thing. Stop killing the body with seeker-sensitive Christianity. We harm ourselves whenever we water down God's standard so that we can reach people. No, that's what I just said. The holy standard of God, because God is holy, I have the Holy Spirit, I have the ability to live like Jesus Christ. Obviously, we will fall, we will make mistakes, but that's where repentance comes in, amen? Thank you, for, thank you Lord Jesus, for repentance. Uh, uh, it, it, it says this in the word, that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek my face, God says this, I will hear them from heaven. I will turn to them. I will come and I will heal their land. Repentant? You want to see revival? Repent. Yes. You want to see a change in your life, your friend's life, your family's life? Repent. I want to say this. The Holy Spirit has been challenging me lately to consider how am I stewarding him in my life. The Holy Spirit activates the body, correct? I said that like five times already, right? There is no life in this body without the person of the Holy Spirit, right? So one thing with that, we must consider this. As the body of Christ, as the body of Christ, how are we treating Holy Spirit? What are you making him watch? What are you making him listen to? How are you defiling your body? We are his literal house. He is supposed to be the owner of this house, but we're estranged coming in thinking we can wreck things, thinking we can uh, displease and disobey the person of the Holy Spirit. Uh, check this out. I was at a church camp this last week, and there was a beautiful uh, imagery that this man gave. He, he asked this, the, the pastor asked this boy to come on stage. He had a towel. He placed it on the boy's shoulder, and he says, I'm going to give you, what if I gave you $1,000 if you did not drop that towel off of your shoulder for 24 hours? You know what that would do? That boy will walk different. Guarantee it. That boy would not go to certain places. That guy would not talk to all the same people anymore. Are y'all getting what I'm getting at? Whenever you, when you see a prized possession like that, oh, you're like, oh boy, my life has got to change so I can nurture the precious Holy Spirit. He's been really getting, getting at me from this because in the word, uh, David writes, turn my eyes from looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways. Also in Psalm 19, uh, chapter 19, verse 14, he says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we all bow our heads? Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit.
Lord Jesus, I thank you for being in this place. Now the Lord had me to preach the gospel to this entire body of people. And I, and I want to ask if there's anyone out here who's feeling uh, 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 pricked, that they're, they're, there's something that they can't explain, a tug or a, a feeling they can't explain, but they know that the lifestyle that they're living is wrong, that they need uh, 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 changed ways. If, they haven't, if you haven't received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want to let you know it's as easy as this. A, admit to your sin. We are all are ashamed to this sickness called, and this disease called sin that has harmed us for centuries. But here it is, B, to believe that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross so that these sins could be totally wiped out as East is from the West. And C, to commit your ways to Jesus Christ and surrender to him as Lord of your life. Now, with the raising of a hand, is there anyone in this place who does not believe or know the Lord Jesus Christ, who is willing to surrender their life right now to the living God of the universe? Is there anybody? We have one. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If it's just for one, I'll preach for 10 hours, hallelujah. Because you know what? The Word of God says that there's, re I love this, this one translation that says there's rejoicing in the presence of angels. You know who's in the presence of angels? The King of glory. So he's rejoicing over one soul being saved. Thank you, Jesus. Can we lift that up? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, for my one individual, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would uh, uh, just create a steadfast heart within, with, within this person, Lord God. I pray that you're saving them every day or sanctifying them, God, helping them to walk in a way that's pleasurable to you. I pray that they would be equipped with mighty men and women of God that would surrender their lives to the will of God and work to disciple them in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that an increase uh, uh, of knowledge, of wisdom, and revelation in a personal relationship with you, Jesus Christ, that that would be the foundation of their life. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we give you praise, thanks, and we all said, amen. Thank you, Lord. We are so happy that you joined us today. Here at Compassion, we value family, which means we value you. If there's any way that we can be praying for you and believing with you for something, please make sure that you let us know. You guys have a great week and we'll see you here next Sunday.